हेलो बच्चों सो वेलकम टू अनदर एडिशन ऑफ फार्मा फ्राइडे और मैं डॉक्टर अंकित तो आज हम डिस्कस करेंगे ड्रग्स फॉर एस्थमा सो व्हाट इज एस्थमा एस्थमा इन सिंपल वर्ड्स इट इज टाइप वन हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी तो सर टाइप वन हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी में क्या होता है अनकंट्रोल्ड और अननेसेसरीली इन्फ्लमेशन होती रहती है एंड दैट इन्फ्लमेशन लीड्स टू ब्रोंकोस्पाजम और ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रिक्शन दैट इज वाई पर्सन फील्स चेस्ट टाइटनेस डिफिकल्टी इन ब्रीदिंग एंड हाइपोक्सिया नाउ देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ ड्रग्स वी हैव फॉर एस्थमा द फर्स्ट वन विच विल कंट्रोल इन्फ्लमेशन दीज ड्रग्स आर नोन एज एंटी इन्फ्लामेटरी ड्रग्स एंड एंटी इन्फ्लामेटरी ड्रग्स आर गिवन फॉर लॉन्ग टर्म ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ क्रॉनिक एस्थमा to control the activity of asthma and the second class of drugs we are having is bronchodilators bronchodilators they will directly go and dilate bronchus hence they are given in acute asthma to relieve as a reliever therapy so anti inflammatory is known as controller therapy bronchodilators they are known as reliever therapy now let's start first with anti inflammatory drugs सो फॉर दैट हमें ये पहले पता होना चाहिए कि एस्थमा में टाइप वन हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी में इन्फ्लामेशन कैसे होती है सो देर इज अ सेल नोन एस मास्ट सेल मास्ट सेल के ऊपर एक एंटीबॉडी होती है विच इज नोन एस आई जी ई सो आई जी ई एंटीबॉडी विच इज लोकेटेड ऑन सर्फेस ऑफ मास्ट सेल वेन एंटीजन कम्स एंड अटैचेस ऑन दिस IgE antibody, the mast cells they release various inflammatory mediators. In other words, they degranulate. और कौन कौन से inflammatory mediator release होते हैं Very important interleukins. And we have to remember interleukin फोर and interleukin फाइव are the main inflammatory mediators among interleukin. Apart from interleukin, there is an enzyme. Inside the mast cell known as फाइव locks enzyme, full form होती है लाइपो ऑक्सीजेनस एंजाइम विच रिलीज ल्यूकोट्रीन ल्यूकोट्रीन सी फोर एंड ल्यूकोट्रीन डी फोर ल्यूकोट्रीन सी फोर एंड डी फोर दे विल एक्ट ऑन ब्रोंकस एंड दे एक्ट ऑन सिस एल टी वन रिसेप्टर ऑन ब्रोंकस विच लीड्स टू ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रिक्शन सो अगर हमें यह बात समझ आ गई है एंटी इंफ्लामेटरी ड्रग्स now are very simple for us to remember so let's see this diagram again so the first drug is omalizumab omalizumab blocks ige antibody which is located on the surface of mast cells the second class of drugs we are having is mast cell stabilizers mast cell stabilizers they inhibit degranulation of mast cells and release of inflammatory mediators the drugs are nidocromil chromoglycate sir kaise yaad kare remember inke naam mein chrome word aata hai so you have to identify chrome word nidocromil chromoglycate then we have the drug which inhibit five lox enzyme lox ka matlab lipooxygenase enzyme and hence it inhibits the release of leukotriene c4 and d4 the drug name is zilutorn then we have a drug one monoclonal antibody that blocks interleukin 4 receptor the drug name is dupilumab then we have three monoclonal antibodies that will block interleukin 5 the first one is mepolizumab reslizumab is the second one which will directly bind to interleukin 5 and benralizumab which will block interleukin 5 receptor and lastly second last we have a drug that will block cis lt1 receptor so the drug which blocks cis lt1 receptor of leukotriene these drugs are known as leukotriene receptor antagonist and the drugs are montelukast and zafirlukast and it is very easy to remember they are ending with the word leukast kyunki ye leukotriene ke receptor ko block karte hain now we have a drug which has almost all actions 
that broad spectrum drug which is considered as a drug of choice for chronic asthma is corticosteroid corticosteroid have broad action hence it is the most preferred drug to be started as an anti inflammatory drug so we know about now anti inflammatory drug let's talk about now bronchodilators so where bronchodilators are given they are given in acute attack of asthma to relieve bronchospasm now how to remember it we all know a famous character batman remember the word batman so b stands for beta 2 agonist a for anticholinergic drugs t for theophylline which is present in tea and coffee and last bronchodilator is magnesium sulfate so these bronchodilators are given in acute attack of asthma as a reliever therapy so let's see how do these drugs act so first of all remember there is a receptor which causes bronchodilation which receptor causes bronchodilation that is beta 2 receptor that causes bronchodilation sir how beta 2 receptor on bronchus stimulates one enzyme adenylyl cyclase adenylyl cyclase increase the level of cyclic amp and cyclic amp causes bronchodilation so we have a drug known as beta 2 agonist beta 2 agonist they directly stimulate beta 2 receptor so we have two types of main beta 2 agonist one is saba saba stands for short acting beta 2 agonist it produces very rapid or short duration of action that is why it is given in acute asthma and another drug we are having is laba laba stands for long acting beta 2 agonist it produces long and sustained effect it is given for long term maintenance of bronchodilation but now we have a drug which is a combination of both saba as well as laba the drug name is formeterol and now among beta 2 agonist formeterol is the drug of choice for acute attack of asthma as well as in chronic asthma to maintain bronchodilation now we know that cyclic amp causes bronchodilation but soon this cyclic amp becomes degraded thodi der ke baad ye degrade ho jata hai cyclic amp ko sir kaun degrade karta hai there is an enzyme phosphodiesterase four enzyme so if we inhibit this enzyme can we increase the level of cyclic amp the answer is yes hence we have a drug phospho diesterase four inhibitor the first drug is theophylline theophylline is a non specific inhibitor ye bahut sare types ke phosphodiesterase enzymes ko inhibit karta hai but their main action is in asthma is phosphodiesterase four inhibition roflumilast and silomilast they are new drugs they are specific phosphodiesterase four inhibitor specifically approved for asthma and copd now beta 2 receptor causes bronchodilation but we have an opposite or a different receptor that causes bronchoconstriction that receptor is m3 receptor which is known as muscarinic receptor of acetylcholine so muscarinic receptor it activates inositol triphosphate inositol triphosphate causes calcium influx and calcium causes muscle contraction hence bronchospasm hence we have a class of a drug among bronchodilator known as anticholinergic drug anticholinergic drugs they inhibit or block m3 receptor of acetylcholine so these drugs are ipratropium and tiotropium ending with the word tropium and umiclidinium and eclidinium ending with the word dinium and lastly we have a drug in asthma that will block calcium entry or calcium influx so the big brother of calcium is magnesium we all have read in chemistry and magnesium blocks calcium channel hence bronchospasm will not occur the bronchus will dilate so this is in nutshell all the drugs for asthma we need to remember so till then keep pill learning